So Thomas Hart Benton, um, if you're not familiar with him, he is probably the most famous painter from Missouri. Um, most famous 1930s, 1940s. He was termed a regionalist painter. So he does do a lot of Midwest rural scenes. Um, here's an early work of his uh, from 1924, Taney County Barn. Uh, Taney County is down there in the heart of the Ozarks. And then the photograph is Tom uh, sketching on the, I believe, current river. But he is an Ozarks boy. He is born in the small town of Neosho, Missouri. You can see there on the map the, the uh, red uh, star. So it's he's born almost in Arkansas, almost in Oklahoma, but definitely down there in the Ozark Hills. Um, and he talks about in his autobiography, An Artist in America, right on page one, about the setting of Neosho, how it is part of the Ozarks. Uh, and he talks about the creeks and the, the springs and the hills. So that does become a major fact. And Tom, uh, I'll talk about, I'll quote this autobiography several times, An Artist in America. Uh, the Mid-Continent System has the, the book in there. Uh, you can borrow it. Um, it's I really, really highly recommend it. It's not so much about how he paints, what he thinks about art. It's about his life and his travels, his adventures. But it is a wonderful book. Um, so a little bit of his family background. Uh, the Benton family uh, first arrives in the United States, not even the United States then, in 1731. They are from England and Wales, some of them. Uh, they arrive in North Carolina uh, in 1731. And then very typical migration pattern. Some of them move to uh, Tennessee and then uh, Tom's immediate ancestors come to Missouri. But this was his father. Uh, how's this for a name? Messenius Eason Benton. M.E. is what he went by, or Colonel M.E. He uh, did serve in the Confederate cavalry. He was a private, but he does then later on take on the, the uh, honorary title of Colonel, as in that Southern gentleman, you know, Colonel Sanders sort of Colonel. Um, he becomes a lawyer. He is the prosecuting attorney for Newton County, Missouri, which is where Neosho is located. Uh, some of you may have heard of the Bald Knobbers. It was a, a vigilante group down there. He helped uh, put them out of business. One of his main tasks, uh, even though he had served in the Confederacy, uh, he assisted Union veterans in getting their pensions. He then becomes a U.S. District Attorney. And when Tom, uh, when his son was seven, uh, Colonel Benton was elected to the United States Congress as a representative. Um, and then after that, he comes back to become a lawyer. How do I get rid of this off the screen, though? See, it, it's yeah, it's, it keeps advancing. Can I pull it? Hide it. There it goes. Thanks. Um, so uh, Tom, then in a, another uh, book, he writes: "Time after time, my father would abandon his law office and, with a crony or two, head for flowing water." We mentioned the flowing water, the creeks already. Clients would have to wait. After I was big enough, he would often take me with him. It was on one of these trips when I was seven years old that I experienced the ecstasy of discovering I could swim. He said, I learned to know the lure of running water and the immense sense of freedom given to those who yield to it. Uh, Tom was supposed to follow in the family business, become a lawyer, become a politician. But Tommy is, even as a child, like to draw and doodle. So eventually he wins out. He travels to Chicago to study at the Art Institute there. Then he heads off to Paris and he ends up in New York City. And he lived in New York City for 12 years, for 22 years total. But after being in there for about a dozen years, his father passes away. And Tom then begins to leave New York, begins coming back to the Midwest, going to the deep south, traveling up and down the big rivers, um, and really trying to recreate or recapture his Ozark uh, Missouri youth. Uh, maybe in, in a sense, trying to please his, his deceased father. Um, and one of the things that really inspired him was these big rivers. We're not to the Ozark streams yet. Uh, and so he did a whole series of sketches of the last cotton boat on the Mississippi River, the Tennessee Bell, did a few paintings that feature the Tennessee Bell as well. Uh, of course, on the big rivers, the steamboats are really very iconic. Uh, here are two sketches that he did of Mississippi River uh, steamboats, the Cincinnati and the city of Memphis. 
And in fact, the city of Memphis shows up in his mural later on uh, in the Missouri State Capitol. Uh, you can see it in, in both scenes there. I mentioned the autobiography earlier, An Artist in America. So again, a lot of it is about his travels. Um, so the chapters in there are the West, the Deep South, the Midwest, uh, the mountains, the cities, and the rivers. And obviously that's what we're going to focus on a little bit more tonight. Uh, since the autobiography comes out in 1937, Tom's only 48 years old. He does have to keep adding some chapters to it. Um, one is called Back to Missouri, Missouri, I should say, is, is how he wrote it, Back to Missouri, uh, and then After and After Again. So he keeps adding chapters. A recent critic said Tom really missed his calling. He should have been a writer. But Tom in there says there's something about flowing water that makes for easy views. Down the river is freedom from consequence. All one has to do is jump in a skiff at night and by the morrow be beyond the reach of trouble. The currents sing of freedom to everyone. The thought of floating effortlessly away on running water has an irresistible charm, whether or no there is any real purpose or inset to it. And then the next year he paints Moonlight on the Osage, which I think per per perfectly captures what he had just written. After 22 years in New York, um, Tom is hired as the head of the painting department for the Kansas City Art Institute. He's given that big commission to paint the mural in the Missouri State Capitol in Jeff City. So he's able to come back to his home state in 1935 in glory. He's doing quite well now as an artist. He's making good money. Um, actually, him and his wife, Rita, wrote a check for the house that, that I now work at. Um, so he's got a little more time and he wants to reconnect with the Ozarks. So he begins to take annual or even uh, twice a year floating and fishing trips down the Ozarks. Uh, the Buffalo and the Current Rivers were his two favorites, but he pretty much hit all of them. Uh, so much so that in the 1973 uh, Buffalo River Canoeing Guide, Tom Benton makes the cover of it. Uh, and this one was actually sent to his house. So he is now sketching, as he always had done, uh, the Ozarks and, and the, the rivers. This is the White River, um, which about 10 years later was dammed. Uh, so that scene doesn't really exist so much on the, the uh, White River that was dammed for, the, for Table Rock Lake and uh, Bull Shoals, I believe. Uh, this shows the young fisherman, as it's titled, uh, the young man with his back to us. That actually is Tom's son, T.P., um, for those of you that weren't real sure maybe who Tom Benton was, this should start looking a little more familiar. These uh, fairly bold but earthy autumn sorts of colors, the greens, the golds, the, the uh, rust sorts of colors. Um, this one doesn't have as much action as his typical things. Uh, it's, obviously, it's an Ozark, more placid, peaceful, uh, relaxing scene. Uh, he does tend to exaggerate uh, facial features, expressions. He has muscles kind of popping out. Um, Lots of depth of field and very curvy sorts of forms and lines. But it was almost always just the guys that went on these float trips. Tom later said, women say they are dying to get a look at the darling wilderness. And the next thing you know, they're demanding flush toilets. Um, so this, the painting is John Boat on the Buffalo River. Um, but in the background of the painting, you can see Bad House Cave and then compare it to how, I think Tom captured it pretty well. Uh, from the photograph. Although Tom himself did not work off photographs. He said, when you use a photograph, you just get to see it with a single eye. So for him, it was all about the sketches. So he always took his sketch pad on these float trips, wherever he went, really. He said, whenever he wasn't drawing, he was thinking about drawing so that he could capture these sorts of moments, like the fishing boat on the Buffalo River uh, in the late 1960s. And down on the rivers too, he always had his pipe and a jug of bourbon. So this is Cave Spring from 1963. Again, it's a fairly well-known Benton painting. Um, the gentleman there that's taken a nap on the bank of the, the current river, in this case, um, was his lawyer, Lyman Field. And again, back to his autobiography, he says, the rivers of Missouri are often very beautiful. Many of them have their sources in immense hill springs, which pour out of the limestone bluffs at the rate of thousands of gallons a minute. The water runs cold and clear for a while. Great sycamores hang over their banks. And in the summer, when the current moves slowly, these are duplicated in the river below. 
Um, so notice some of these descriptive sorts of uh, nouns and adjectives that Tom is using in this one. The limestone bluffs, the sycamores that are duplicating the river below, the outcropping white bluffs. And we'll go back to Cave Spring and you can see those exact same sorts of elements. And one of the things I want to point out here that I think Tom Benton is a, a very talented painter and a very talented writer. And those two skills, I think, in him really come together pretty well. In his artwork, like Cave Spring, it's pretty easy to tell a story. What has been happening to this guy? You know, how did he get here? What's he doing now? What's he dreaming about? When's he going to get up and, and head on down the river? Um, so you can tell a story with Tom's paintings, but then I think also in his words, he really paints a nice visual picture for your brain as well. I hope that makes sense, made sense. I hope I explained that. Probably not as well Tom Benton could have. Um, again, to get it in a skiff and we're out in the middle of one of these rivers on a summer night when the moon is full is to find all the spirit of Spencer and his fairy lands for alone. A little break here. Uh, Tom there is talking about a poem by Edmund Spencer called The, the Fairy Queen from 1590. He's wrong. Uh, Tom made a mistake. That line, Fairy Lands Forlone, is actually from John Keats' Ode to the Nightingale from 1819. So, but we'll give him a little pass. Uh, Missouri summer moon is big and white and cuts out vivid and clear edges, but this only intensifies the somber interior depths of the tree shadows and adds an air of impenetrable and silent mystery to them. And then he, again, creates very much this same scene in a book illustration for Huckleberry Finn. And yes, Tom Benton was a book illustrator. He illustrated 13 books. Uh, four of them dealt with the rivers. Uh, he did in 1939, he illustrated an edition of Adventures of Tom Sawyer. We already saw Huck Finn. The third Mark Twain book he did was Life on the Mississippi in 1944. Tom Benton, Mark Twain, I mean, that really just works. Uh, they never met, uh, but two of the most famous Missourians um, you know, having this same sort of experience, I guess. And then the fourth book, one you've never heard of, it's called Three Rivers South. It's a young adult reader um, uh, about the life of young Abraham Lincoln. But you can definitely, I think Benton does a pretty good job of capturing uh, Lincoln's profile there in, in the Ohio River, I think, in the background. There's also a fairly well-known folklorist, uh, Vance Randolph. He wrote a bunch of books uh, about folklore and folk songs, including a four-volume set, Ozark Folk Songs, and Tom Benton provided the artwork for the end papers. Uh, so you can see we're looking, we're up on a high bluff, and we're looking at the little skiff, the little John boat down in, in the river valley below. Another one of Vance Randolph's books was called an Ozark Anthology, and Tom Benton contributed a, a story called America's Yesterday to that. I'm not going to read it to you. I uh, hope you guys on Zoom can maybe see some of it. But again, look at how he is really creating this visual picture through his words. Another big part of, of the Ozark culture is the folk music. Um, Tom really liked bluegrass folk music. And he said, I've always looked for musicians when I'm in the hill country. I like their plaintive, silent, slightly nasal voices and their way of short bowing the violin. These are the Leverett brothers from down near Galena, Missouri. Tom ran into them in 1931. He does sketches of Wilbur and Homer uh, Leverett and then puts them in this painting uh, that same year, Missouri Musicians. And I mentioned that Tom did end up doing pretty well as an artist. So this one painting got him $10,000 in 1963, which wasn't too shabby. Um, so with the Ozark music and the folk songs, that brings us into the uh, small country churches, the music tradition in, in some of those. Uh, this actually is not the Ozarks. This is a, a revival meeting that Tom saw in, I believe, North Carolina. It's titled Lord Heal the Child. But still, Appalachia, Ozarks, a lot of crossover there. And Tom says, the arts of our pioneers were simple arts, perhaps, but they were genuine and they were assiduously cultivated. Uh, in the depths of the mountains, it is possible sometimes to hear music that, though simple, is just as genuinely music as any that may be heard in the churches of the great cities. 
So here in Lord Heal the Child, uh, you can see this this uh, female preacher is laying on hands and, and healing this young girl. Some of the, the country churches, though, don't uh, do a whole lot with uh, musical instruments. And, and Tom says they allow no stringed instruments in their churches, and they do not confuse God's song with the devil. But still, uh, it's that old time religion. So this is titled Ozark Singing from 1926 just a, a, a drawing. So Tom in the 20s, the 30s, he's out in the Ozarks, he's meeting these uh, these country musicians, uh, these folk musicians like Dudley Vance that he, he met in Tennessee in the early 1930s. And then later in the 70s, uh, Tom Benton is commissioned to paint a mural for the uh, brand new Country Music Hall of Fame that's being established in Nashville, Tennessee. So he goes back to the Ozarks. He wants to reconnect with these, these old time musicians like old Nick Nickens, who was a left-handed fiddler, and a guy I think is fascinating, Chick Allen uh, from Branson, Missouri. Chick Allen played the full jawbone of a mule as a percussion instrument. He had it on a piece of twine or a rope around his neck, and then he would hit the, the mule jawbone with a pencil or a stick, and that created the percussive sound. Um, so there's Tom, uh, in looks like maybe a general store, uh, sketching, uh, Chick Allen and Chick Allen does show up in that, uh, country music hall of fame mural, uh, which is titled sources of country music, but not playing the jawbone of a mule. Uh, Tom gave him, he's actually both those fiddle players, uh, and notice that he's not playing like a symphony violin classical up under his chin. He's got it down in the crook of his elbow and in his his armpit. So there's that short bowing sort of thing. Uh, in this mural, Tom wanted to do, as the title shows you, where did country music come from? So in the center, he's got the Ozark Fiddlers, the country barn dance. In the uh, On the left-hand side of the screen, the Appalachia folk music with the dulcimer player. Up in the top corner, some gospel singers. There's a church on the hill running right through the middle, the railroad, really important for country music. Um, way off in the distance, there's a steamboat arriving, so he captures that element. In the background as well, there's a banjo player with a bag of cotton, so then he brings in the spirituals, the work songs, and then on the right-hand side, he has the uh, cowboy singer. Uh, so Tom really wants to bring in all these elements that created uh, country music. And a little side note, if any, about, well, about two years ago, uh, Ken Burns did a new documentary, Country Music. This mural was pretty much the opening sequence of that whole documentary. It was 10 seconds in to, to episode one. So, uh, and also as a side note, uh, the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville just opened up and it's running for a year, a whole big special exhibit on this mural, Tom's process, the sketches he did in preparation for it, letters back and forth between the Hall of Fame and Tom Benton. Um, so you might, if you get down to, to Nashville, Tennessee, you might really try and check out uh, that exhibit. But those who know Benton best say he's happiest when floating downstream with a sketch pad, a chaw of tobacco in his mouth, and at the close of the day, a flupper of fried fish, baked beans, and fresh buttered radishes, accompanied by good conversation and a nip of Jack Daniels. And then Tom writes, on the rivers of Missouri, a profitable business is kept up by guides who take fishing parties on floats. Still happens. Uh, it's an old and beloved sport of the country. A crowd, generally of men, get together and hire a train of flat boat and skiffs. These are loaded with tents, fishing paraphernalia, and a lot of whiskey and beer that is taken along to make the fish bite. They camp at night on the sandbars. And so here is Fisherman's Camp number one for, from 1968, showing pretty much that exact same scene. But one of Benton's favorite rivers was the Buffalo River there in north central northwest Arkansas. Um, the guys would usually float two or three days, depending on how far they were going to go. Uh, that depended on where they put in here on the left-hand side of the map and where they would take out there in the center of the map. Um, but he really, really loved the Buffalo River. But as I mentioned earlier, the White River had gotten dammed in the mid-1950s. And now in the 19, early 1970s, late 1960s, there was some talk of doing some similar dams on the Buffalo River. Here's one of the landmarks on the Buffalo called the Chute. Um, on the left, you see Tom's sketch for that, and it's gridded off so he can take that small grid and then blow up the bigger grid onto a blank canvas and easily transfer the drawing over 
and recreate the painting on the larger canvas. Um, notice the difference between the sketch and the final painting, though. In the painting, that one canoe, the canoe nearest to us, is the lead canoe. Nobody else has made it through that series of rapids yet, uh, as you see in the drawing. But there were three uh, kind of ideas of how they should treat the Buffalo River. So should the Corps of Engineers put in some, some dams, create some flood control, provide electricity, lots of jobs, lots of people go to the lake for tourism. Some people said, no, Congress should make this a national park um, to conserve its natural biz beauty and, and river tourism. And we are talking, no offense, but Arkansas. Some people said the federal government should, should just save the heck out. And he even got so bad, uh, the, the arguments, there was even some, some gunplay going on. Um, people shooting at some of the, the uh, tourists and, and nobody, I think, got hurt, but, you know, shooting over their head. And so the Arkansas Gazette said, hey, Thomas Hart Benton's coming down here for a float trip. Let's hold off on, on the gunfire right now. And the uh, Arkansas Gazette, that was the newspaper from Little Rock, uh, at the very bottom says that they support making the Buffalo part of the national park system. So in uh, support of this, Tom Benton, Benton in 1971 gets together with the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, and they make a movie titled A Man in a River uh, to promote preserving and protecting the Buffalo River. Uh, Tom Benton's 82 years old when this happens, still floating along. Um, when they shot this movie, um, no, sorry, never mind. Uh, so uh, some of you may remember or know, uh, or met Randall Jesse. He was a longtime uh, announcer on local news. Um, he was a good friend of Tom's. He actually was a neighbor. He shows up in several of Tom Benton, or a few of Tom Benton's murals as well. But yeah, that's what I was about to say. So at 82 years old, uh, the, the river was running pretty high that spring. Tom's was the only canoe that didn't tip over. So he was actually pretty accomplished as a, a paddler. Um, a couple years later now, he's 84 years old, and his doctor says, you probably shouldn't take these float trips anymore. Uh, we don't want you to be more than an hour away from the hospital. Tom Benton went on the float trip and made his doctor and surgeon go with him. So here's the three of them uh, having their lunch with butternut bread uh, on the, the backside of an overturned canoe. As you can see, too, from the quote, St. Louis Post-Dispatch went along on this 1973 trip, and they asked Tom Benton, is this your last float trip? And Tom said, how the hell do I know? I figure I got several good years left in me yet, but I do know I like to paint big pictures and I like to take float trips. And so this is Ozark Reflections. Um, and again, you can see how well I think he captured the, uh, the landmark B Bluff down there on the, the Buffalo River. Uh, so... Saturday Evening Post said, in everything from canoe to LST, it's a World War II landing craft. Tom actually made a, a trip down the Ohio River with, on one of those uh, for a series of uh, World War II paintings. Um, but he has floated or paddled or steamed on river and creek and bayou across the land. So what we'll do here in a moment is, uh, let me switch screens, I think. And we'll pull up this movie uh, from 1971 that Tom made with the EPA. It's only about 15 minutes long. It's a little choppy sometimes. It's, the quality is not great, um, but we'll we're running into that. But before we do, um, did we get any questions? Do you guys have any questions? Okay, we'll give it a minute. Uh, anybody typing or anything? Do you guys have any questions? Okay, well, we'll come back to that. We'll give you a chance to uh, later on. So uh, let's watch A Man in a River. Let's see if we can get this through. Okay, that's what I was wondering about. Oops. Come on, it keeps getting in the way. That's the movie. Okay. New shoes. This is a love story. 
the love of a fascinating free-flowing stream by a great American painter, author, conservationist, raconteur, Thomas Hart Benton. Born in Naoto, Missouri on April 15, 1889, he was named after his granduncle, Senator Thomas Hart Benton, Missouri's first United States Senator. In the evening of life, Benton has made Kansas City his own, but he's traveled all over America and to Europe, achieving acclaim as a leading artist of the American regionalist movement. His paintings hang in the Metropolitan Museum of Art and many other art museums. He is best known for his murals, his poems without words, on the walls of such places as the New School for Social Research, the University of Indiana, the State Capitol of Missouri, and the Harry S. Truman Library. Both the American Institute of Architects and the Architectural League bestowed gold medals on Benton for his murals. For seven decades, Benton has roamed America, writing about and painting her people and natural treasures. Benton says, however, he's never happier or more content than when he's on a river or simply watching its rushing water as it cascades away in summer. Years ago, before the railroad sent their prongs into every nook of the country, Benton wrote, all the rivers of Missouri and the Mississippi were regarded as traffic ways. And too, there was, and still is, something about flowing water that makes for easy view. Down the river was freedom from consequence. All one had to do was jump in a skiff at night and by the morrow be beyond the reach of trouble. To read Tom Benton, to see his paintings of America's rivers, is to feel the presence of the mountain Indians who for thousands of years lived along the riverbanks. Of the immigrants from the east who filled the open land and set up their homes along America's rivers. Benton has written of these Americans and painted and drawn them, and the Americans have followed. Always he goes back to the river. His greatest reference is retained for the rivers of the Ozarks. Such a river is to be found in northwestern Arkansas, 131 miles north of Little Rock, about five and a half hours driving time south from Kansas City or St. Louis. Here you will find Benton's beloved Buffalo. For 148 miles, it winds eastward through the Ozark Hills, finally finding its junction with the larger White River of northern Arkansas. By comparison, it is indeed a stream. The Ohio is six times longer than the Buffalo River, the Mississippi 16 times. The nation has recognized the importance of preserving for future generations its free flow and exceptional wilderness. In 1972, a federal law was enacted preventing the building of dams on the Buffalo River and other intrusions on its natural beauty. The current groups of sunfish and bass are at home. Towering trees like sentinels along its banks reflect in the stream below. Outcropping white bluffs break the monotony of the tree branches and foliage. Along the shoreline in the summer evenings, there is an immense quiet and ineffable peace. River roads rest around campfires, contentedly enjoying the out of doors. Two such river rovers, Randall Jesse and Thomas Hart Benton, are found on the banks of the buffalo, reflecting on its past and its future. Now, uh, even though you've uh, been over the Buffalo for the first time that you've been over the Upper River, uh, but you did know this country way back. Oh, yeah. Way back, in fact, didn't go to hell. Walked all the way to hell. 
I've been here all the time and played on the catching tracks. But I never saw uh, any crews on the river in those days. Just a few skips. Well, today, how do you think the country compared to uh, the way it was in 1926? Well, you know, the new change the trade here. Oh, yeah, of course, that, that lets more people will see the beauty of this country, you know. Before, only the people who lived here really knew how beautiful it was. The beauty of the church is really, it is kind of wild nature quality. Yeah. We, I admire it. Keep that for what remains of it. Well, yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. I think they're doing it best every yeah. May, in the long run, we're against uh, the future there. Yeah. Well, I tried to warn you control. They are both federal and state control over the exploitation of such areas as the buffalo and the base. We have to think about that for about two grand years. You think the Buffalo River is something unique, then, don't you? Well, it's totally in it. That's an extraordinary river. It offers all the hammers, hazards, the fast river adventures without any ultimate danger. There is a certain untouched quality about this river, it seems to me. But you know, you can pull the river just like that stream off the hills along it, starting the road and turning it clear, running the river into a muddy one. But the river really has to serve the land about. It's all one piece. Well, Buffalo, thank goodness, is still a clear running river. Yep, and I hope we can persuade its people to keep it that way. How long down on it? Well, I'll pick up Yeah, we've talked long enough, let's paddle a while. The river is quiet in spots, with long, languid, peaceful pools. Pools which can change as rapidly as the summer sky. I really got a pretty good ripple down the river here. Show it on your left or a snag in the road. Well, the river picks up speed slowly at first, and then faster, and then all at once you're in the shimmer. Sure. There's a river landmark known as Bathhouse Cave. This has long been a favorite spot of Benton's. He's painted and sketched it and its neighbor, the Nars, many times. Bathhouse Cave. Uh, where did you get it? I judge there must be some bats back in there. They would have got it bad about game. What's beautiful about this is the erosion at the foot of the uh, rock. And I particularly like this section of the buffalo because these uh, dramatic rocks are isolated. Uh, they're just as dramatic rocks in other places, but there's so many of them you can't single them out. This thing stands out alone like a monument. My first memory of being on our western rivers goes back to 1900, when I was 11 years old. My father took me on a float trip on the Gasconade River in Missouri, which also is one of the few rivers in this section that runs northeast. Uh, and I have been off and on. Of course, I was away both in Europe and then living in New York many years. I lost the rivers part of my life, but I took them up again after I came back west in 1935. And either the spring or the autumn or sometimes both, I've been on one of our rivers out of here. One of my favorite rivers in this country was the White River before the big bull chose down turned it into a lake. That's uh, not as interesting to me as it used to be as a free flowing river. What I like about rivers, I like to see them free flowing, unimpeded, and as near as possible natural surroundings. 
you'll find out not only here, but on the upper Missouri River. And surprisingly, the river, Missouri River, way up in Montana, is just about as wide as it is where we live in Kansas City. This painting that uh, you've done of the Lewis and Clark expedition on the upper Missouri. I followed the trail of Lewis and Clark from uh, Omaha to the headquarters in Missouri and into Idaho. But the most beautiful rivers for making drawings and paintings are these rather smaller ones with their bluffs in Missouri and northwestern Arkansas, like this river, the Buffalo, which is one of the most beautiful in the United States. And I hope we can always uh, keep it beautiful. I know the folks along its reaches also hope this. I think the folks along its reaches really want to see it get a beautiful river like that. Now, this valley, where we're sitting now, this bend of the river, there's a beautiful valley in here, and it's about as peaceful a place as you can ever find. The only thing you hear here when you're sitting down is a few birds, maybe a few crows. If their fish could talk, you might hear them, but that's all. I remember one of your most famous paintings, or I guess one of the many famous ones, was this cotton loading that you did on the Mississippi area. So I yes, I was waiting back in 1928. The last pack book on the Mississippi, the Tennessee Bell. I saw her load cotton, stayed with her, rode her down in New Orleans, read her landing in New Orleans. And uh, in my uh, look in. The flood pictures, of course, those were 34. Uh, 37 was the great flood of the Ohio and Mississippi and southeast Missouri. Yes, I went through all that flood. I made many drawings there. Uh, I was commissioned in that case. Um, by the uh, Kansas Star and the St. Louis Post Dispatch. Well, Tom, I think this is a good spot to stop talking and invite everybody to come down and see the buffalo for themselves. But tell them this when they come down here and make camp, clean it up before you go away. <laughs> So Benton and his friend Randall Jesse are off down the river again, hoping that others come to enjoy the river, not to spoil it. This river is the Buffalo, but it could be any of the many rivers this artist and author has known and loved. An artist has the grace to see and feel and portray beauty. A wise man knows it should be preserved. Such a man is Thomas Art Benton. The late art critic Thomas Craven once wrote, Tom Benton is one of the few living artists with a first-rate mind. He has not only the ability to live and create, but to think. A painter with the ability to think is something criticism has not had to reckon with for many a day. Benton is like Dreiser and a novel. O'Neill and the theater, a pioneering force in American art. This has been the story of a man and a river, Thomas Hart Benton and an Ozark stream called the Buffalo. Take a look at who the uh, narrator is. Take a look at who the narrator is. Did you know? Yep. Okay, so back to camera. So I think we had a couple questions come in on chat. So the first question we had was, any comments on his paintings and buildings around town, such as at the Poly Theater? Okay. So do I, do I need to repeat that? or? Um, I think we're good. I think we're good? Okay. So um, there are several places in town that you can see Tom Benton's artwork. Uh, first place to start would be the, the Nelson G Atkins Museum of Art. They actually have one of the, the largest publicly viewable collections of Tom Benton's artwork. Um, very nearby to that, uh, the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art. They have one Benton painting 
titled Desert Artist. It's usually not on view, but you might check or you can put in a request. And maybe they'll put it on view more often. Um, we're out here in Independence tonight. Uh, so one of his best murals is at the Truman Presidential Library. You can also see Randall Jesse. Uh, he's, he uh, appears in there as a pioneer, uh, as does Randall's wife, Fern. Um, and then um, there, the, the question I asked about the folly, uh, there is a reproduction of a Benton mural there. It's a, a single panel, maybe two panels, but from Tom's 19... Uh, 30 mural called America Today. Uh, the mural is at uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in uh, New York City. So what's at the folly is just reproductions of his. Um, he also has a mural at downtown at the Kansas City River Club called uh, Trading at Westport Landing, Old Kansas City. It's got two titles. Unfortunately, it's a private club, so most people don't get to see that mural. Um, and then something else you can check out Tom Benton's grandson, Anthony Benton Goode, has three murals in town uh, at the uh, at Union Station, uh, the mural of all the locomotives above the escalators. Uh, and then he also, Anthony, the grandson, has a mural at the downtown Kansas City Public Library and at the downtown Marriott. Um, so that's where you can see his artwork here in Kansas City. But as you travel around the country, almost every American art museum, big, middle, small, has something by Benton. Tom was incredibly prolific, uh, counting his days as, as an art student. He painted for about 70 years. Oh, and I should mention, you can come to the Benton house and see. Uh, we've got about 20 of his pieces as well there. So, Also had a question. Did he keep his strong Midwestern twang during his years in New York? Um, yeah, I think he did. Um, he played it up a little bit more, I think, for this video. And when he was down in the Ozarks, um, he really almost seemed to have this kind of dual nature, this dual personality. He really portrayed himself as this Ozark country boy. But as I mentioned at the beginning, he was the son of a congressman. From the age of 7 to 15, Tom Benton lives most of every year in Washington, D.C. Um, he studied in Chicago. He lived in Paris for two and a half years. Uh, then he lived in New York City for 22 years in Kansas City after that. So he could move in those more upper echelon, high society sorts of things. He was not a big fan of high society. Um, Tom is so quotable. Let me give this one just a second. Uh, he said uh, about high society that uh, high society, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this a little bit. Uh, oh, high society was about as worthwhile as the froth on a glass of beer. So, uh, and his core belief was common art for the common man. So I think for this video, yeah, he played up the twang a little bit. Um, what also comes through in the video is he's, he kind of his little cantankerous sort of nature a little bit as well too, so. Do you guys here in the room have any questions about anything? Put you on the spot. I picked up on something next time I've seen this. Mm -hmm. And you said cowboy. And I'm sitting up here close, and then I finally see what I didn't see last night. I caught it. Oh, in, in Sources of Country Music? The, yeah. the cowboy guitarist? Yeah. See yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah, in fact, one of the founders of the Country Music Hall of Fame was the, the cowboy guitarist, Tex Ritter. And he was the one that came to Tom Benton and said, you know, I know you're in your 80s. You said you're not doing any more murals. They're too big. They take too much time. But you know, bluegrass, folk music, origins of country music. How about something like that? And we'll pay you $60,000. And so Tom said, okay, I'll do this mural. And then while Benton was working on the mural, Tex Ritter actually passed away. So in the early version of that mural, the cowboy guitarist is off in the background. And in the final version, Tom has brought him forward. It's not sp supposed to be Tex Ritter specifically, but just to honor that, that aspect of, of country music. Anything else? Like I said, I, I do invite you to come visit the Benton home. We're at 3616 Bellevue. We're in Midtown, Kansas City. We're really close to the Uptown Theater, the KU Med Center, uh, kind of Northwestport area. We are closed for a couple more weeks uh, while we finish 
repainting the interior, but hopefully in February, uh, maybe February 2nd, uh, we're going to be reopening and hopefully running full steam. Uh, but keep an eye on our Facebook, excuse me, our Facebook page, our uh, Missouri State Parks uh, page to, to be informed on that. So, okay. Thank you for everyone for coming and um, go do this presentation. <laughs>